Hi everyone, my name's Jem. I'm the Crazy Pigeon Lady and this is my latest video. I want to welcome you and to thank you for tuning in. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Baby. Uh, Baby doesn't have a proper name yet. We've only had him a week and we don't know if Baby's a boy or a girl yet. Um, so we'll decide that a bit later. Um, but as we've just got him, I thought it would be good to do a little video about Baby Pigeons. Um, so Baby here is about six weeks old and uh, he's fully weaned so he's eating solids and drinking water by himself and doing lots of uh, uh, flapping around uh, and at this sort of age he would be independent largely. Um, so you may wonder why you don't see baby pigeons a lot. A lot of people uh, have never seen a baby pigeon unless you happen to have rescued one or raised one. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that they remain in the nest for a very long time until they're about 32 days old um, and when they emerge they're almost the size of an adult bird looking very much like this um, and so they're difficult to distinguish uh, in a crowd of other pigeons um, so that's why you generally don't see them why do they remain in the nest for such a long time well baby pigeons are what's called atricule which means when they hatch they are completely helpless and they're totally dependent on their parents for food um, and for warmth and for protection. Um, that's in contrast to precocial birds, so things like turkeys, hens, ducks, um, which are capable of walking and following their parents and feeding from minutes after they've hatched from the egg. So when a baby pigeon develops, it starts life as an egg and uh, pigeons, and I, and I should say before I carry on, that when I'm talking about pigeons, I'm talking specifically about rock pigeons. So rock pigeons being the wild ancestors or feral pigeons in our towns and cities, um, and of fancy uh, domesticated pigeons and racing uh, pigeons. Um, so they start off life as an egg, generally two legs, eggs are laid. Um, one about 48 hours after the other but the parents won't sit on the eggs until the second one is laid and this is to ensure that the chicks will both hatch uh, on the same day and therefore grow at the same rate and it's part of their very efficient uh, breeding strategy uh, rock pigeons are very efficient uh, breeders and one of the ways that they do that is to make sure that their babies hatch at the same time and grow at the same rate um, for the first 10 days of their lives, the babies are fed on a substance called pigeon milk, which isn't actually milk. Um, there's only three types of birds um, that actually produce milk, pigeons and doves, um, uh, flamingos and penguins. Um, and it's produced uh, in both the male and the female uh, bird at the same time. So mum and dad both take equal responsibility for the feeding of the chicks. Um, and the milk is a, a fatty, protein-rich substance that's produced in the crop uh, of the birds in what's called the epithelial cells. Um, and the production of this milk is stimulated by the hormone prolactin, which is actually the same hormone that stimulates the production of milk in humans. Um, so that's something that we in pigeons have in common. Um, as you can see, our little one here is quite excited about uh, shoving his beak between my fingers and this mimics the feeding uh, motion. So the baby would shove his beak inside the parent's mouth uh, and the parent would kind of heave and, and, and cough up the milk from inside the crop and the baby would sort of gobble it down like he's trying to do here. Uh, he likes to convince me that he's still a baby and that he still needs to be fed on milk but I promise you he's not. Uh, he's fully eating solids, but he still likes to pretend he's a baby from time to time. And as you can see, he gets quite excited, um, as a baby pigeon would do, um, in the nest. This fatty, protein-rich milk um, ensures that the babies grow at a very, very fast rate. In fact, they'll double their weight, their hatch weight, in the first 24 hours. Um, and they'll continue to grow at quite a significant rate. Once they reach about 10 days old, the parents will start to mix the milk um, with uh, food that the parents have eaten themselves. So this starts the weaning process. The babies will be fed a mixture of milk and, and food that's uh, regurgitated from the parents' crops. 
and they'll gradually increase the amount that they're doing that and giving less milk and more food as part of the weaning process. And as the baby grows, it will start to grow its feathers. It will start to become more active. And at some point it will be able to physically step out of the nest and walk around the nest area preening. It's quite a, an itchy, uncomfortable process growing new feathers. So they do lots of preening. Um, and they do lots of exercising. They will they will flap their wings uh, quite furiously to start exercising their wing muscles uh, to prepare them for flight. And once they begin the weaning process, there is a gradual transition towards their independence. Um, and this is when the roles of the parent pigeons will change slightly. So where they used to take equal parts um, in feeding the chicks, what will happen now is that dad will start to take more responsibility for getting the babies fully onto solid food and mum will get back on the nest to start laying the next lot of eggs and this is another pillar of the successful uh, and prolific breeding strategy of the rock pigeons is that they actually start the next round of birds uh, babies before before the uh, the young ones are even fully fledged yet Eventually, when the babies are mature enough and capable of a degree of flight, they will go and join the uh, flock of other birds. And, and rock pigeons are actually, there's only a handful of different species of types of pigeons and doves which actually operate as a social group. Um, and so unlike other uh, pigeons where the, the young will stay with their parents for a number of weeks while the parents teach them, um, how to find food, the, the baby pigeons will actually integrate with the flock uh, and the parents will leave them at that point. And when they join the flock, they're not fully mature. They're still quite naive. There's a lot that they have to learn. Um, but there's a lot of adults there in the flock that they can learn from. And once they integrate with the flock, they'll learn where to find food, where to find shelter, you know, how to avoid predators. And they'll pick up everything that they need to know from the social group rather than being taught uh, directly by their parents. Um, they'll reach sexual maturity, that is to say, be able to breed themselves from about six to 12 months old and probably earlier in that time frame for, for feral pigeons. Again, that's another pillar of their efficient breeding strategy that the birds are able to breed once they're still at quite a young age. Um, towards the end of that 12 month period is probably more likely for, for racing pigeons and other domestic pigeons. And in fact, some breeds that process might be even longer um, for, for some breeds which are slower to mature. Uh, but this one's got a little way to go yet um, before he reaches uh, that point, aren't you? So baby here is about six weeks old uh, and at this point he, he would have left the nest and he would have joined um, the, the flock of the rest of the pigeons. So the question is, is how would you spot him in, in the flock? Um, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people have never seen a baby pigeon before and when they leave the nest, they're virtually the size and appearance of an adult, certainly from a distance. Uh, and so they can be quite hard to spot. Um, but the keen eyed amongst you, if you have a good look um, amongst a flock of feral pigeons, if you happen to be feeding them or, or see them in your town centre, the keen eyed amongst you will be able uh, to spot the signs. So I'll give you a little quick guide as to how you can spot uh, a juvenile uh, pigeon amongst the crowd. Uh, first of all, they'll have be of a slightly smaller size. They've got a little bit of growing to do, although that's not a reliable determiner on its own because some ferals are naturally quite small uh, in size. You might possibly see a little bit of the yellow baby fluff on them. Um, you probably can't see it uh, in the camera here, but there's a few tiny, tiny little bits of yellow fluff on uh, the baby's back here, not very easy to see, um, but you might see a little bit of that, that's possible, um, but shouldn't really be very much of that at this stage once they've left the nest. Um, you'll also notice that they have dark coloured eyes, I'll just bring them closer to the camera there, um, which will change colour as they grow. So baby here's a blue bar, we call this colour a blue bar, 
Um, and typical with blue bar pigeon, uh, sorry, blue checker, should I say, blue checker. And in, uh, in common with other blue checker pigeons and blue bar pigeons, he'll have, he'll eventually, he'll have around sort of orange coloured eyes, maybe slightly more red or slightly more yellow, but generally it's around orangey coloured eyes. Uh, so that's something you can look out for is the dark coloured eyes. Uh, on white birds, though, those those eyes are likely to remain dark in colour, so they won't, uh, so they won't change. But I fully expect. Uh, this little one's eyes to be around an orange sort of colour when <laughs> when he's fully grown. Uh, another thing that you can spot is sort of the head and face has that very kind of babyish look. So everything's not quite in proportion. His head's really small. His eyes seem kind of really big and bulgy. He's got a big oversized beak that's perhaps a little bit too big for his face. Um, also, you notice that the, the white wattle, which is the part that, that sits over the top of the beak here, it's still pink. It hasn't developed that sort of fleshy white uh, powdery coating on it yet which he'd would get uh, when he's older um, and his beak still got quite dark colouring on the tip um, and that should spread and his beak should darken up and that white part should should form and his face should fill out a bit uh, so he'll look a little less like a baby and more like a grown-up You'll also notice that there's a little bit of babyish type of behaviour going on you can hear him squeaking no doubt um, so you might hear that if you're close uh, to the flock and you're feeding, you might hear that. And in fact, although the baby at this point is independent and capable of feeding himself and drinking water, he will chance his arm at begging other adults for food, um, which other adults will probably ignore. Um, but he certainly tries to beg uh, me for food. And if I put my fingers or anything near him, he'll, he'll certainly get uh, very excited um, about doing some feeding. Uh, you'll also see that he's um, <laughs> he uh, kind of jiggles his wings. There's this sort of wing jiggling motion. You can see him doing the wing jiggling at the moment. That's something you do in the nest when when begging for food from uh, from the parents. So you might hear a little bit of squeaking, and you might see uh, a little bit of jiggling going on. Uh, so that's how you can spot a young pigeon in the crowd. So. Thank you very much for watching my very brief guide to baby pigeons. Uh, if you have any more questions, please do put them in the comments and I will try to answer them uh, as quickly as I can. Um, thank you for watching. Please like and share and follow my page uh, and check out my blog at www.crazypigeonlady.com. Bye.